Welcome to the Apostolate's Peace of Heart Forum Classic Series, where hundreds of key personalities in the church share insights and wisdom from classic spiritual literature. These experts are interviewed by the Apostolate's founder from a unique family perspective so that the spiritual insights shared can be applied to our everyday lives and give us peace of heart. Let's now join the discussion. Well, welcome to this continuing series that we're now doing in The Secret of Mary. We're here with Father Hugh Gillespie, a Montford missionary, guide us through our meditations, and Father Bernard Geiger, OFM Conventual. Father, can we open with a prayer, please? Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We continue to place ourselves in the presence of Almighty God, and to ask, through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, the grace we need to continue to grow in the spiritual life. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come. Before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Father, in section 21 and 22, your, your insights on that. Um, in section 20, 21, and 22, Montfort now is going to make a very important point. The only thing we find in Mary is God alone. Mm -hmm. There is nothing other than the presence of God in Mary. She is so open and so completely given over to him mm -hmm. that when we are within Mary, that only one we can find is God. Okay. And precisely because of that, there is no falsehood within her. Mm -hmm. There is no sin within her. There is no imperfection within her, and there is no deception within her. And so it's within Mary that we can begin to lose the deceptions we've bought into, mm -hmm. the falsehoods of our sinfulness, the wrong constructions of ourselves mm -hmm. um, that lead us astray. So Mary purifies and clarifies us, as Montfort writes in number 21. And in addition to doing that, now Montfort is going to say, Look, I've just called Mary the paradise of God mm -hmm. and talked about the joy of being within Mary. But now let's stop and let's also say, Mary, remember, cares for her children and raises them and gives them grace. But the greatest of all graces is a sharing in the cross of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So Montfort now is going to insist, this is not simply let's turn to Mary and be happy and everything is easy. In fact, when we turn to Mary, we will receive more than anyone else the cross of Jesus. And that frightens a lot of people. <laughs> yes. But he's saying, don't be afraid. Right. This does not mean that he who has found Mary by a true devotion will be <clears throat> exempt from crosses and sufferings. Far from it, he is more besieged by them than others are because Mary, the mother of the living, gives to all her children portions of the tree of life, which is the cross of Jesus. This w image of the tree of life is another one of Montfort's favorites. Mm -hmm. And again, he uses it in various ways. From time to time, as he does here, he'll call the cross the tree of life. Mm -hmm. Elsewhere, he'll call his devotion to Mary the tree of life. Elsewhere, he'll say Mary is the tree of life because her fruit is Jesus. Mm -hmm. So again, we want to be careful not to reduce Montfort to a single idea. It's not that Montfort is changing his mind, mm -hmm. but he's conscious with the tradition of the church that this image of the tree of life could be understood in various ways, mm -hmm. and he won't content himself with just one way of looking at it. Um, the point being always that it's this way of growing into the life of Jesus, which is truly, mm -hmm. truly the source of the tree of life for us as Christians. But Montfort's going to say, Mary doesn't just bring us the cross but she brings us the grace to carry it well and effectively. And curiously, he says, that even in the suffering of the cross, there's a sweetness when we receive it from Mary's hands. And what he means by that is precisely because of this intimate union with Mary and this deep participation in Jesus, which results from that, carrying the cross is not seen so much as a chore, but as an act of communion, an act of unity with Christ himself. And so, now, having said all of this, Montfort began his letter saying, 
Holiness is your vocation. And there are means to grow in holiness that all require grace. And so we need to find a way of growing in grace. Now Monfort said, but the best way to grow in grace is Mary. Now Monfort is going to say, so the real question is then, how do we find Mary? So Monfort doesn't come out of the box and say, to grow spiritually, you need to have Mary. He says, let's look at the call to grow in holiness mm -hmm. and what's required to grow in holiness and the grace that's needed Indeed. and realize that we need to find a sure way of growing in grace. Mm -hmm. And if we understand who Mary is and how grace comes to us through Mary, now we realize we really need to find Mary. Mm -hmm. So it's only here then in number 23 <laughs> that Montfort comes out and says the difficulty then is how to really and truly find the most blessed Virgin Mary in order to find all abundant grace. And again, though, Montfort, Montfort says here, and this is important for all of us who read and speak the language of Louis de Montfort, Montfort again here says, it's possible that God will give us grace in some other way than through Mary. But Mary is the ordinary channel. So Montfort is not saying by any means that God is restricted <clears throat> to Mary, but that ordinarily grace comes to us through Mary and we need to respect that. But for those of us who wish to truly grow in perfection, Mary is the way to go. And so Montfort isn't going to talk about other possible ways which exist, and he acknowledges those. He wants to talk <clears throat> about the best way, mm -hmm. which is Mary. And so that's what we're going to do now. Um, and to do that, Montfort is going to say, we need to find Mary. So the question is, what is the right way to unite ourselves with Mary? What is the true devotion to Mary? Montfort says, I'm not going to waste your time talking about false devotions. Let's just talk about devotions to Mary and what is the best one. Yes. So he begins by saying, there are basically basically several kinds of true devotions to lady to our lady and he's going to name three of them and the first is basically just being a good christian fulfilling our basic duties avoiding mortal sin um acting more out of love for god than fear of god mm -hmm. um and this is an important note for monfort fear should never be our motivation love and the freedom that comes from love should be the basic motivation of all Christians. Praying to Our Lady occasionally and honoring her with the church when the church celebrates something in her honor. That's the minimum duty, the baseline true devotion that all Christians should have. And, and you see, it's, it doesn't ask a lot. It basically says, this is what we need to do to make sure we're going well. Yes. And Montfort is not going to say that that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he's not writing for somebody who's content with the baseline. Mm -hmm. He's saying for those of you who want to climb above the baseline, now there's another way to go. And that second form of devotion to Our Lady, which is very, very true, is feelings of esteem and love for her and a confidence and a veneration in Our Lady. It leads us to join confraternities of the rosary to recite the rosary regularly and to honor Mary's images and to, to praise Mary and to really seek to grow in holiness. And Montfort says, this devotion, which is also popular and common among Christians who have a great love for Our Lady, the saying of the rosary, mm -hmm. the wearing of the scapular, the joining of societies in her honor and of doing works in her honor, the participation in and the initiation of activities in honor and praise of the Virgin, Montfort says, these are good, holy, and praiseworthy things. Mm -hmm. And so he says, this is the second level of devotion to Mary. But now Montfort's going to say, again, I'm not writing <laughs> for this level. Right. This is a good level. He's not dismissing it. He's not criticizing it. But he's saying there's even another level of devotion to Mary. And he says, this devotion is practiced by very few and this is the one that I'm about to show you. So only now do we finally get to the secret. Yes. And this secret, Montfort says, 
consists in giving oneself entirely and as a slave to Mary and to Jesus through Mary. And after that, so it's not just to say I offer everything, but after making the offer, offer and I'm going to change the wording here to conform more with the French original, that we do with Mary, in Mary, through Mary, and for Mary, all things. Mm -hmm. The order here corresponds to the order in, the, in Montfort's True Devotion. Mm -hmm. uh, but in The Secret of Mary, Montfort does, and later in, the, in this same text, Montfort will use another order of the prepositions. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a key or a crucial point, um, but, um, but his language is very careful. Um, but Montfort says the truest devotion of Mary, the highest level of devotion to Mary, is a gift, a complete gift of oneself to Jesus Christ through her, mm -hmm. and a gift to Mary of oneself to Mary as a slave. And then that means, that means that it's a gift that has a consequence in how we live, and that we need to act and do everything with Mary, in Mary, through Mary, and for Mary. Mm -hmm. So now this is not just saying the rosary. This is not just wearing the scapular or honoring Mary. This is a deep mystical relationship and a deep gift of myself to Mary. Here I am not asking for something from Mary. Mm -hmm. I'm giving myself to Mary. Here I am not just externally honoring Mary, but in the very depth of how I make my decisions and how I act. I'm going to make Mary a part of that. Mm -hmm. So everything now that proceeds after this sentence is going to be the explanation of what this secret is. But this is the secret. Mm -hmm. The secret of self-gift to Mary as a slave, which allows us to completely belong to Jesus. And the key to the slavery being acting with, in, through, and for Mary mm -hmm. in all all that we do. So right away, right away then coming to number 29, this is a total surrender. And Montfort just dives right in. Mm -hmm. He says, what we're going to do is a consecration of ourselves. And he says, we should choose a special feast day on which we give, consecrate, and sacrifice to Mary voluntarily, lovingly, and without constraint entirely and without reserve, our body and our soul. Exterior property, such as house, family, and income. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a load. Mm -hmm. And also our interior and spiritual possessions, namely our merits, graces, virtues, and satisfactions. Montfort's saying a lot here. Mm -hmm. He's saying an awful lot. He's saying we should choose a feast day. In other words, remember part one, or step one of devotion to Mary, that first level, honoring Mary with the church. Mm -hmm. Montfort's saying we stay in contact with that. We choose one of the days in which the community of God is already honoring Mary. Yes. And on one of those days, we do something more than simply honor her. Mm -hmm. We give ourselves completely over to her. We consecrate ourselves to her. Consecration is what? It's a setting apart for the service of God. Yes. So this is what we are going to do. On a Marian feast day, we don't just praise Mary, we set ourselves apart through her for the service of God, but we do it completely. And Moffat goes into great detail. He says, this needs to be done as an act of love, not an act of fear. This needs to be done in freedom, not merely out of a sense of oppressive obligation. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be done generously without holding back. That's pretty difficult. Yes. This is difficult. In his true devotion, Montfort will propose a 33-day process of preparation to do this. In The Secret of Mary, Montfort just says, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. And there's no process of preparation proposed here. Mm -hmm. So one of the interesting things is that Montfort himself understands the way we make a consecration in various ways. Mm -hmm. And he seems to be speaking to somebody he thinks is ready to do this. Okay. Um, obviously, though, Obviously, though, this is not a step a person can just dive into. Mm -hmm. um, but then he says, I really mean everything. 
I mean your possessions. I mean where you live. I mean how you dress. I mean what you hold in your heart. Mm -hmm. I mean you and everything that makes you who you are. The gift must be complete. Mm -hmm. Now, he's not saying you're suddenly going to find yourself without a house or without money, but that how we use the things of the world, how we use the things of our heart, all of these, mm -hmm. all of these are placed in Mary's hands. And that's why few people take this path. It is so complete and mm -hmm. so thorough mm -hmm. and yet so liberating. But that's also why Montfort can say and can guarantee, if you do this fully, mm -hmm. you will fully be formed into the likeness of Jesus in every aspect of your being. It's a way of <clears throat> becoming, of Jesus becoming incarnate <coughs> in us mm -hmm. through Mary. Yes. So that really, again, we get back to the doctrine of the mystical body of Christ. It's a beautiful poetic expression, but it's much more than a beautiful ex poetic expression. The reality is that Jesus really does, in a mystical way, become incarnate in us. Mm -hmm. So that, as Paul says in Galatians, it's no longer I who live, but Christ living in me. Mm -hmm. right. And that is a, uh, you know, that goes right over our heads. But if we could get into that again, that's something that would blow us away. And Montfort is, Montfort is saying here, look, this is not just about taking devotion to Mary, a step above what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. He's saying this is taking Christian life a step above what everybody else does. He says, no religious community, no community of monks or ascetics anywhere mm -hmm. asks for this. There is no other practice that demands such an offering. This is why, like, for example, in his true devotion, Montfort will say this even goes beyond our baptism. Yes. Because he's saying there's a baseline value that all Christians need to follow, but this is much more beyond that baseline. Mm -hmm. And then there's that baseline that the more devote, the more, the more devoted will tend to follow. And this goes beyond even that baseline. This is as far as you can go. And so Montfort is swinging for the fences here. <laughs> He's insisting in all humility, we have to do this little by little and day by day, but he is swinging for the fences here. Mm -hmm. um, but he also uses a word which is problematic for us. He says, we consecrate ourselves as slaves. And right away, right away, the modern reader, but even the reader of Montfort's day is going to stop and say, hold on, where are we going with that? Mm -hmm. And so Montfort, jumping down to number 32, is going to talk about what he means by slavery. And, you know, that's too important a word to just gloss over. Mm -hmm. Montfort says, slavery is about belonging and about completeness of belonging. And he says, no word like slave, is like slavery in expressing completeness of how one belongs. And we can talk about slavery as being of three kinds. And he's only interested right now in slavery as it pertains to God. Okay? So that's one of the first things you have to understand. He's not talking about human slavery. He's talking about a relationship with God. And he's going to say, everything that exists, including us, by our very nature as created beings belongs to God. By our very nature, we completely belong to God, whether we like it or not, whether we realize it or not. We did not give ourselves life. Yes. We do not control the duration of our lives. We did not determine our talents and our capacities. Somebody else did, and we exist for a reason and a purpose. We do not own our own lives. Whether we recognize that or not doesn't make it any less true. We are not the owners of our lives. We belong completely to God, period. So in that sense of complete belonging, simply naturally, all are the slaves of God, all completely belong to him. But then Montfort says, there's the slavery of coercion. The devil, for example, or the demons, or the sinful, or the wicked, or those who reject and rebel against God. Well, they don't belong to him any less because they do that, but they resent that belonging, and they rebel against that belonging, and they seek to break free from that belonging, but they can't. 
try as they might to be independent, they're constrained. They are still gods. And so that's another kind of a slavery, Montfort says, the slavery of a prisoner. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is God does not make them prisoners. They make themselves prisoners by that rebellion of trying to break away from belonging to God. Yes. And, and the only effect that would be would be to diminish their existence. And that rebelling against God is their hell. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, but then Montfort says, there's another way to belong to God, not just by nature, not just by constraint or by force, but by embracing our belonging to God and by loving God and by freely saying, yes, I know I belong to God and I want to grow more fully into that belonging and so I don't just accept the Lordship of God over my heart. My heart fully opens itself to this Lordship and I embrace God. This Montfort calls a slavery of love. And in a real way, in a real way, one way to think about this is the way a husband and wife are called to completely give oneself to one another in marriage. Not to hold back corners of the heart from one another, but to the extent that it is possible for human beings to fully give themselves to one another, we do that in marriage. Mm -hmm. In the same way a religious is called to give his self to the church, with holding back as little as possible to completely open his heart and to give his self to the mm -hmm. church. In the same way, Montfort is doing something similar. He's saying, this is what we're talking about. And one can speak of a spousal relationship, in a sense, analogously, as a form of slavery. Mm -hmm. Not coercive, not oppressive, but as complete belonging. One can speak of religious life as a slavery of a sort, not as coercive or oppressive or demeaning, but as a complete belonging, complete gift and donation of self. This is what Montfort is getting at here. Only now he's saying the complete self-donation, the complete gift is into the hands of Almighty God. Um, and so this is the slavery of love that Montfort is talking mm -hmm. about. And he says, I really mean slave and I don't mean servant. <laughs> and so he's saying, don't substitute that word here. Yeah, right. Don't change it on me. <coughs> yeah. It is slave. Mm -hmm. Because a servant gets paid, mm -hmm. and a servant has a contract, and a servant can leave, yes. and a slave doesn't. Mm -hmm. A slave completely belongs, doesn't expect payment, mm -hmm. and a slave can't walk away. And Montfort is also saying here, again, this is not coercive, but the gift is so complete. Walking away is not an option, mm -hmm. like in a marriage. Yes. You, don't, you don't enter into a marriage thinking, well, if it doesn't work out, I'll just leave. Yeah. You enter in with the intention of remaining forever. One professes final vows with the intention of remaining forever. Walking away is not an option we put on the table. Mm -hmm. Slavery, not service, is the, is the only word Montfort has. And so as difficult as the word is for us to hear, try as you might, it's, you're hard-pressed to find a better one. Yes. Father Bernard, do you have any insights for one minute? <laughs> well, <clears throat> that word slave is, is very important. And uh, what comes to my mind is Maximilian Kobe, who builds upon that and goes another step further. And he says, we want to belong to Mary not only as a slave, but also as a property or a thing and a possession. Because he says a slave still has some rights the master must treat the slave with respect and, and um, uh, not abuse the slave, that the slave has a right to life and the, and the means to life and so forth, and the master may not uh, take that away. But he says um, he wants to belong to Mary even more than that by b belonging to her as property and possession, a thing to be Mary's thing, so to speak, res et proprietas in Latin. And what he means by that is that um, Mary can use me in whatever way she wants. She can even dispose of me if she so wishes. In other words, make me a martyr if, if that's what she wants to do. And um, it, it's implicit in de Montfort already. It's not as if it's de Montfort didn't say that. He didn't say it, 
But it's not that he rejects it. It's implicit there, and Colby simply makes it um, explicit that my consecration, I want it to be that far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. An instrument in the hands of Our Lady. Well, that's... An instrument, yes. Well, we just want to thank you for walking with us in this journey. And uh, we have a few more shows to go, but go to our website at familyland.org and uh, access yourself to the treasure of programs that are, that are available for free downloads. Thank you. And